So this video covers engrams, which are an extremely important thing in natural language processing, as well as the process of maximum likelihood estimation. I'll provide an overview of both topics and then run through a case example for maximum likelihood estimation. For starters, an engram is just a sequence of consecutive words. For example, if I say, I'm so excited to be taking CS421 this fall, that entire sequence is an engram, and so is just the first part, I'm so excited. Engram language models are language models built upon this idea. Basically, you want to predict the probability of a word occurring given its history. If you do it right, you should predict higher probabilities for things like the word fall following I'm so excited to be taking CS421 this, and lower probabilities for things like the word refrigerator following that same sequence. The way we predict these probabilities can vary to some degree, but a common method is to estimate the probabilities based on word frequency counts. Basically, you can take a large corpus, count the number of times you see the history you're considering, and then count the number of times a specified word follows that history. And this method isn't fail-safe by any means. You can easily imagine scenarios in which it might backfire. For example, our history might contain uncommon words like Natalie Party, or we might have limited computing resources, making it difficult to estimate in gram probabilities this way when we're using large corpora. So because of these potential issues, we want to avoid computing the probability of a word given its entire history, and instead approximate that history using just the most recent few words. We do this using fixed length engrams. For example, we might consider the most recent two or three words. It's conventional to refer to lower order engrams in natural language processing with specific terms. We refer to single word engrams as unigrams, two word engrams as bigrams, and three word engrams as trigrams. In general, higher order engrams are just referred to using the value of n. So four word engrams are just called four grams and five word engrams are just called five grams. Engrams follow the Markov assumption, which we of course already talked about with hidden Markov models. To reiterate, the Markov assumption just states that we can predict the future based only on the most recent past. In terms of engrams, this means that in a bigram language model, the probability of a word depends only on the single most recent word. In a trigram language model, it depends only on the two most recent words, and so forth. And this is formalized using the equation that you see here. If we want to find the probability of an entire word sequence, for example, an entire sentence, we can just multiply our individual ingram probabilities together. For example, if we're working with a bigram language model and we want to figure out the probability of the sentence summer break is already over, we can multiply the probability of over given already times the probability of already given is times the probability of is given break times the probability of break given summer. To compute these ingram probabilities, we commonly perform what is called maximum likelihood estimation. Maximum likelihood estimation is very simple, and I actually already snuck it in earlier in this video. We just compute it by taking the full sequence of in words that we're interested in, finding how frequently that sequence occurs in a corpus, and then removing the nth word from that sequence and finding how frequently the sequence of length n minus one occurs in the corpus. We divide the former term by the latter term and end up with a nice probability between zero and one. I'll work through an example to show how that looks. Let's say we have a really tiny corpus here. So there are a total of four sentences in the entire corpus. We'll attach sentence start and end markers to each sentence. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any history for the first word, nor would we be able to effectively predict that a sentence should end in our downstream application. So we have our sentences, and let's say we want to do maximum likelihood estimation for some bigrams. So we'll, we, we need to go ahead and compute the frequency of every single bigram in our corpus. This includes things like I am, am cold, and Chicago, followed by the sentence terminator. 
Since our corpus is really small, most of these frequencies are also small, but we see that, for example, the bigram containing the word cold, followed by the sentence terminator, has a frequency of three. We also need to compute the frequency of every unigram in the corpus in order to do our maximum likelihood estimation. Now, these frequencies will be a bit higher since there aren't as many variations of unigrams as there are of bigrams. We have all the information we need now to do a basic maximum likelihood estimation, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll compute the maximum likelihood for two different bigrams for variety. One of them will be the bigram containing the beginning of sentence marker followed by the word I, and the other will be the word cold followed by the end of sentence marker. For the first, we'll just divide the frequency count for the beginning of sentence marker followed by I, which is one, by the frequency count for the beginning of sentence marker in general, which is four. This means that the maximum likelihood estimate for this bigram is 0.25. We'll approach the other bigram very similarly. We'll find the frequency count for cold, followed by the sentence ending marker, which is three, and then we'll divide it by the frequency count just for the word cold, which also happens to be three. So in this case, our maximum likelihood estimate is one, which means that based on the limited information available to us in our corpus, if we see the word cold, we would always expect the sentence to then end. Now this is obviously a little bit odd, so pretty soon we'll see some slightly fancier things we can add into our maximum likelihood estimation to prevent this from happening in the future. Overall, in this video we saw that maximum likelihood estimation is a nice simple way to predict probabilities when building n-gram language models.